week, Lab TV travels to a Navy research lab in Dahlgren, Virginia, to meet an engineer who works with an amazing defense system called Aegis BMD. Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense is a shipboard system that allows our Navy to defeat incoming ballistic missiles. It's comprised of missiles and computers and software and operated by our sailors. Aegis means shield because the system is designed to protect. If another country or an enemy were to launch a ballistic missile, uh, our system is designed to track and fire one of our own missiles to defeat that. Launching one missile to defeat another missile seems impossible. You could think of it as lobbing a baseball into the air and it's going to follow a ballistic trajectory and then another person was going to throw a marble and hit the baseball. That's a very slow example. The missiles and the targets, they both travel much, much faster, thousands of feet per second. So it takes a lot of precise science and a lot of teamwork to guide the missile to its target. Right now we're at the Aegis Training and Readiness Center here at Dahlgren, Virginia. This is a laboratory where the sailors would learn to use the Aegis BMD system, how to operate it in a simulated environment like you see here. Are right, you guys ready? Yeah. You gonna run through it? These laboratory simulations help them prepare for real test missions on Navy ships. During those missions, the Navy launches replicas of enemy missiles to use as targets. After the target is launched, the ship will have its radar set up. It will detect the target. Let's say that the target is exoatmospheric. Exoatmospheric would mean in outer space, outside of the Earth's atmosphere. And endoatmospheric means inside the Earth's atmosphere. So our missile would launch from the ship and fly into outer space. It's a three-stage missile, so it has a, a rocket motor that kind of gets it off the ship. And once that burns out, that separates, and we have a secondary propulsion system that gets it into outer space. Once it's there, those separate off, and now we have our kinetic warhead that, once it's in space, travels on an inertially guided trajectory. Um, so basically, once it's up there, it's just going to go. Inertia means that an object in motion tends to remain in motion. So inertia causes the SM3 to keep moving on the same path. But it also has an infrared seeker that can see the target and adjust the path or trajectory as needed. So you could imagine if you threw a basketball and it's not going to go in the basket, another player could come up and touch it, redirect it, and it would get back onto its trajectory that you intended for it to travel. So the same kind of thing happens with our kinetic warhead. It's traveling along inertially, and if the seeker, the infrared seeker, decides it's off course, that divert attitude control system can readjust like another player touching the basketball to get it back on track. Since the SM3 uses kinetic force and not explosives, it has to hit the target directly. Both missiles are traveling at mock speeds, so the kinetic energy released from the impact is enormous. For a test, usually there'll be at least one ship. Sometimes we have foreign partners that are allies. They'll bring ships out and participate as well. We have aircraft and radars and a lot of sensors that are there to track and collect data that we need to improve the system and make it better. And thanks to teams of scientists and engineers, the system really works well. In 2008, engineers modified Aegis BMD to shoot down a dead satellite that was losing its orbit and falling to Earth. It prevented the 5,000-pound satellite and its 1,000 pounds of toxic fuel from landing on people or buildings. It's really amazing to be part of a team that has technology that can do this. I, I never thought, you know, growing up and even in college that I would get to be part of something that is this cool. In this Lab TV show, engineers and scientists use math, physics, and lots of teamwork to defeat missiles in outer space.